Hey everyone, welcome back to Cool Magic Form. Once you know what, I got another great sandwich trick for you guys today. Stick around, don't go nowhere, let's get this started. Real good to have you here at Cool Magic Forum. If it does happen to be your first time here, why not go on down there, hit that subscribe button, as well as maybe getting yourself hooked up on the post notifications for this channel. There's a really good idea. Uh, okay, now the trick that I'm going to share with you here today is a bit of a variation of the super glide trick that I showed in my last video. Okay, uh, so if you didn't get to see that one yet, I'll definitely uh, leave a link for it up on the screen so you can go and check it out. Take a look at that one. And uh, that's how this one goes, though. Okay, uh, if longtime subscribers here at Cool Magic Forum know how I just love to use the jacks to locate any lost cards for me, and no different today, we'll give that honor to the Jack of Spades and the Jack of Clubs. And uh, if I had a spectator here, definitely, first and foremost, would have to have a spectator choose a card. Maybe just have them touch a card, okay? I don't need to see it, but uh, I do need to show it to the camera and you guys and everything, okay? So you get that all memorized, get that all in your mind and everything, okay? And then to be real fair, we're just going to lose your card into the middle of the fan over here, and then we'll lose that whole fan into the middle of the middle over here. So you see your card going in basically about, maybe in about the middle 10 to 20 cards, but I would rather have a kind of a ran more random position to that, okay? Uh, do you know how to shuffle cards? Okay, great. So if you can go ahead and shuffle the cards, you shuffle them, make sure, get the cards all well mixed up. Uh, so you, there's no way that I know where your card is at, uh, no way that you'll know where your card is at. Maybe we can get the jacks to locate your card for us. Um, so when you're all happy and content with uh, the shuffling, the cards are all thoroughly shuffled, mixed up, and your card is completely lost in the deck, uh, we'll go ahead and take the deck back from you. I've got the Jack of Clubs here. We'll place the Jack of Clubs on top of the deck, placing the Jack of Spades on the bottom of the deck. Okay, now you, you do remember what your card is, right? Okay, don't forget that. Very important. Uh, like I said, I've got each of the Jacks at each end of the deck. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's take a closer look at this situation. Not to bore you by stating the obvious, but I do think it's interesting to note that we have a Jack at each end of the deck, one at the top, one at the bottom of the deck. And then we've got 50 cards in between those jacks, including your card that you shuffled, okay? And so uh, since, uh, you, the, or, uh, since the only cards actually that you didn't shuffle are the jacks, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a chance to decide where the jacks go to next. So if I had a spectator here, I'd have a spectator just cut a portion of the deck, okay? And then complete the cut, all right? Okay, now see what you did there, since the jacks were at each end, is that you just cut the jacks into a random part of the deck. Okay, so they're together now, and they can go to work on locating your card. Okay, it just takes a moment or so for the jacks to find your card. And then you see if I spread the deck, one card appears in between the jacks, but not just any card. I do believe that is your two of diamonds. You guys want to know how that's done? Definitely do stick around. Let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so this trick I'm going to call Jam Sandwich for two reasons, actually. Uh, one for all the different jamming with cards and playing around that I had to do with different methods and slides until I decided that I had something that flowed together pretty well. And uh, the other being that it's just jam full of nice little uh, slides and methods that you guys are going to like. Nothing too hard. Um, but, uh, well, let me show you what's going on here. Uh, we'll get out my two jacks here again. You can use any two of a kind that you want. You know, aces, kings, whatever you want to use. Any two of a kind. I, you know me, I like to use the jacks. And you're going to lay them down separated like that. Don't put them down in a stack like that. Leave them separated like that. And I'll show you why there's an important reason for that here in a minute. Um, but then we've had a spectator. We're not here we'd have a spectator. Go ahead and choose a card. Say they choose that one right there. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Here in the camera okay so we got the two parts there and uh you what you would do is that you'd show that to the spectator of course so they pick it up and take a look at it and then you're going to do a one-handed fan over here and you're just going to say i'm going to lose your card in the middle of the fan over here okay and you're just going to tap it in like that now what you've done there 
you've got it controlled, okay, right here. So you've got full control over it, over it with your index finger right there, okay. A little bit of pressure, you've got a nice little gap there. See what I'm saying? It makes a nice little gap, okay. Now, uh, before I go any further, i got to explain. This, uh, this little bottom control method is called Under the Wing, and I learned it on Stephen Hammer Magic's channel a year or so ago. Zach was here, did a collaboration on Stephen Hammer's channel, and uh, he showed this bottom control. And I thought it was just fantastic, and it works really, really well with this trick, kind of tailor-made to what I'm going to do here. Because, see, um, we're going to make a little V here, like if you're going to do a Charlie A cut, and you've got that gap there, and you're just going to go over here and feed cards in. Okay? See what I'm saying? Feed cards in, and their card, of course, is now being controlled to the bottom. Okay, and then you're going to square up the deck, only you're going to get yourself a thumb break right there, okay, on top of the chosen card. You get yourself that nice little thumb break right there. You're going to bring the cards down, okay, you're going to go from this position with the cards as you square them. You're going to come over here to you got your contact on your, right here, on your middle finger, okay, bring the cards down. Right there, you got contact on the pip with your middle finger over here, and right here at the first knuckle, the joint, first joint right there on your on your index finger. Okay. So once again, you're gonna slide that down, okay, and then it's just gonna you're just gonna get it right there on your middle finger, basically, is your guide right there on the pip, and then you're gonna buckle that card. Okay, that's gambler's cop, of course. If you've never seen it before, of course, that's Gambler's Cop, fantastic move. Um, Daniel Madison has just done some perfected work with it. Uh, and uh, a real good person to learn this from, also Alex Pandrea, just, just recently put out a really good video on it, a video called How to Steal Cards Like a Boss. Look that one up, and he shows a really, really good, easy ways to get into a gambler's cop. So there you go. You brought it down here. Okay. And like I said, you're just going to aim right there, get contact with that card and then buckle it. It's going to buckle underneath there. It's pretty easy. It goes right naturally into that. Okay. But that's where you want to be for a gambler's cop. Okay. And uh, once you're there, you've got that slid down. You're going to bring the cards forward and ask the spectator, or you can say the spectator, even like I did. Um, you can say, well, you know, you've got your card lost somewhere in probably about the middle 10 to 20 cards in the deck, but I'd rather get it in a more random position. So, like I say, you go from here, you're going to bring the cards up, okay? As you bring the cards up, you're going to buckle there, and you're in Gambler's Cop. And so you can, that allows you to then use the deck as cover as you hand off the deck to Spectator, okay? Hand it off Spectator to, okay? You go ahead and shuffle the deck, and you're in Gambler's Cop. Okay, now you got to watch your angles here. Okay, you can cover with your thumb ring, but you're tucked in pretty nicely there. That card's well buckled in there. So you can just relax your hand. It's very natural. It's kind of nice when you're standing or you can kick back on a, you know, at the edge of a table like this and you're a gambler's cop. But don't worry about it. Okay, it might seem kind of like a very bold move, but do remember that uh, the spectator is now shuffling a deck of cards. Once you ask them to shuffle, their full attention just went to that deck of cards because now they've got to shuffle, okay? They're not going to do that by sitting there trying to burn your hands or anything. And this it ends up very relaxed. This is a very, very good move. I've got to practice it more and more to get it down really, really smooth. But, uh, yeah, you're in a gambler's cop, and you're only going to be there just for a second, okay? So you relax your hands. Your hands, you know, naturally bent. It just doesn't matter, okay? You can have your hands mirror each other. But you, don't worry about it. You're not going to be in there very long, okay? So you've got a gambler's cop. You've handed it off to them. Okay, you go ahead and shuffle the cards. You're going to right away go over here and pick up the two jacks. Now, this is why I said it's good to have them separated. Definitely very important because you're going to go over here, and you're just going to square up okay just like you're squaring up to Jackson you're gonna switch them into this hand squaring them up there okay now once you get them all kind of squared up now they're, they're not watching you a whole lot like I said their attention is on shuffling that deck you're gonna to want to give the cards a little bit of a bow or a little bit of pressure on them and keep that edge hidden because see because that card was buckled see it's got a little bit more of a bend to it and it's facing the other way now okay so it would show you know it's too possible to flash that there's three cards there instead of two so you definitely want to keep a little bit of pressure in there and you do want do want to bow that a little bit um just to take that bend out a little bit more and that's going to help you out at the end of the trick here too um 
So yeah, uh, when they get done, uh, even when they get done uh, shuffling the deck, when you go to transfer, you're going to transfer now over to Biddle Grip here. On the way over, if you want to, give it a good bend. Give it a good bend. Take that bend out. Give all the cards just a good bend. They're all stuck together even better then, okay? And uh, hopefully take a little bit of that bend out of the chosen card that's on the bottom. Got two hearts on the bottom here, okay? And uh, then you take the deck back from the spectator. Say I've got the Jack of Clubs here. We'll place on the top of the deck, placing the Jack of Spades on the bottom of the deck. Okay, now remember our friend the glide move from the super glide trick? Yep, that's what you're going to do. Um, yourself in position, that index finger on the top of the deck, thumb down here at the bottom corner of the deck, going to make contact over here. Now, <laughs> In the demonstration, I did it pretty hard. I'd done a few takes on this, and I kind of wanted to get it done, and I kind of rushed it and did it kind of hard. It just really takes that little bit of a movement, you know, on your way down. And it's a good point to say right at this time, you know, do you, you remember what your card is? Okay, you remember you remember your card? Okay, remember, you got the chosen card there, so you're just going to glide it over there, okay? And perfect time, a little bit of misdirection. Okay, now, you remember what your card is? Okay, great. Don't forget your card. They'll look up at you. Okay, trust me. And then you're just, you know, once again, going to slide the jack out there from the bottom of the deck. So now you're in this clip over here. See what I'm saying? And that's going to be hidden by these fingers. Don't worry about it too much. You're just going to need it out there just a little bit. Okay, so you've got the, the chosen card. You've now shifted over here your grip. And you can go a little bit further back on the deck if you want to. Okay, so you're back here. So, you know, all your fingers are providing perfect cover over there. Got that slid out, slid out a little bit. And then you're going to spread the cards. I love doing this. Remember, like I did in the super glide trick. Uh, only now I'm going to do it at the other the end of the deck, you know. So when I spread the cards and just say, you know, not to bore you and state the obvious, but I do think it's interesting to note. A little bit of pressure over here as you're doing that. Make sure that card the chosen card stays underneath the deck sometimes you can even get that edge to go out a little bit over it provides perfect cover okay um so uh, i do think it's interesting to note though that uh we do have a jack at each end of the deck one on the top one on the bottom of the deck and 50 cards in the middle of those jacks including your chosen card that you shuffled okay and since the jacks are actually the only card that you didn't get to shuffle, we're going to let you decide where you want the jacks to go to next. So you square the cards up, have the spectator cut a portion of the deck over, and then complete the cut. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? Was that the easiest sandwich load you ever seen ever? You know, you, like, you, like I said, you don't, don't, don't get tempted to do a normal sandwich load and then just have them cut the deck and throw the jacks in the middle of it. No, 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 no. No, let them do it. <laughs> Isn't that the beauty of it? There you go. See, so they just loaded the sandwich. And then you say to them, see now, by you doing that, what you did, since we had the jacks at each end of the deck, is that you cut the jacks into a random part of the deck. Okay, so now they're together, and they can go to work on locating your card. It only takes a moment or so for the jacks to find your card, and then you spread the deck. And as you can see, one card appears now in between the jacks, but not just any cards. I believe that is your two of hearts. And there's the trick, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys really enjoy that one. It's a lot of fun to do. It was a lot of fun to create. Uh, like I said, I call it Jam Sandwich because you saw those little slights and moves and everything in it. And it's uh, been definitely an interesting one to use. Um, the under the wing control, definitely a good one to learn. You can use that bottom control for anything. Okay, now let's break that down just a little bit again before I get out of here. Realize that bottom control. Because, you know, with that bottom control, you can go anywhere with that. Okay, you can go to the bottom. You get that on the bottom control, you can go to many, many other tricks that require even just a slop shuffle if you want to control that card to the bottom. So fantastic just for that. Okay, then add it together. Then once again, if you add the, the gambler's cop in with that. Okay, gambler's cop, if for anybody that's afraid of palming cards, that one's actually pretty easy to do. Once you get it down, get it over in the middle, finger over there, and you just squeeze, give it a little buckle. Okay, give it a little buckle right there, and you move it over. Think about this. You got it in Gambler's Cop. You can go anywhere with that. Okay, that's a card to pocket, card to wallet, card to card box, 
whatever you want it to go. You know, say I just happen to use it to load, you know, an encore sandwich trick. Go anywhere with that. So that's what I like about this, this, this trick. It has a lot of little uses for different parts of it. Definitely good use the under the wing bottom control. That's a fantastic use. And do learn this. And I'm going to work more and more in, on perfecting that. I've never gotten too much into a gambler's cop, and I really enjoy doing it. It is deceiving. Very easy to do. Uh, like I said, you just aim for that middle finger, and you just squeeze, and it'll go right into where it needs to be. Don't even be afraid of it. Then you just got your angles. Okay, your angles are pretty easy. Your thumb can cover, make cover that. You know, just don't go out there too far. You know, here too far. You got that. Like I said, they're shuffling at that time. So don't even worry about that. Yeah. But like I said, then that can go to your pocket. Then, you know, there are many possibilities. That could be passed off to your friend and show up in somebody else's pocket. So, yeah, a lot of, you know, a card through window. There you go. Anything like that. A card to any impossible location can definitely be achieved just by the gambler's cops. That's what I'm trying to say here. So, yeah, definitely don't be afraid of the map move. It's a definitely fantastic little slate. Okay, and it works real well with this trick because then it allows you to hand the cards off and they shuffle the deck. There's a lot of power in that. Okay. I have done this trick at least a dozen times in the last few days to people and watch their reactions on the difference. Even in the super glide trick, which is real good, that's real surprising. But boy, whether they're even thinking about it on a conscious or subconscious level, when you let them shuffle the deck in the middle of a trick, that's what everybody wants to do. You know, there's a dying urge and and everybody in the middle of a trick, boy, I'd love to be able to shuffle the deck right now. And you know, some people, hecklers, hey, can I shuffle right now? You know, so it, this one's a nice one. Sure. <laughs> you pass it off and they get to shuffle. You know, you offer it to them and everything. They shuffle. So everything is very, very random. Okay, very random looking. So definitely, I would love to know if you guys uh, use this trick. Make good use out of it. Get prepared to amaze your friends because this one gets really great reactions. I'm really proud of that. But uh, right now, uh, I believe it is time to talk about the contest. Okay, so let's get talking about the contest before I get out of here. Up for grabs uh, is a four-pack of bicycle playing cards to be given away. I'm going to try to give away this right here on New Year's Day. Matter of fact, that's my goal. Um... Two red standard decks, two black standard decks. By the way, the black standard decks are exclusive to these four packs of bicycle playing cards. And this one is up for grabs. Uh, to get in on the contest, really simple. Just got to like this video. Give this video a thumbs up. You have to be a subscriber here at Cool Magic Forum. And each and every video, I ask a question or your opinion on a magic-related topic. And then you answer in the comment section below. And that is the last step on getting you in on any of these giveaways. This video, I think the question I'm going to ask you guys is, what is the sneakiest, most powerful slight or move method that you use in any magic trick doesn't have to be card tricks but in any yeah any magic trick what is your favorite slight maybe it's something you use in in different tricks you know it could be a double lift diagonal palm shift whatever you know bottom deal second deal what is your favorite most powerful slight that you really like to use and maybe use in a few different effects okay see where i'm going with this Okay, so just answer that question down below. Like this video, subscribe to Cool Magic Forum if you're not already, and uh, answer that question in the comment section below, and then you will be registered into winning this four pack of bicycle playing cards. I, I, I really hope you guys like this trick. I hope you uh, learn this trick and get ready to maze your friends with it. Don't be afraid of the gambler's cop or of the under the wing control. They're so great, okay? They're bold, and but they just fly by people. Do not be afraid of them. Learn those. Learn the gambler's cop. I mean, you, you'll you learn it and pick it up easier than you think. And, and uh, boy, that's that's a powerful one. That, that can go card to pocket, you know, card to wallet, card to anywhere, card to any impossible location. That's a great one, okay? So definitely do learn that, especially if you're not into palming cards. There's a way to go. There's a great way to get a card into your palm and, and keep it hidden, okay? Not too hard, okay? So like I said, yeah, I hope you guys really, really do like that trick, and I hope you go out and amaze your friends with it. You stay cool, and I'll see you in my next video.